Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and I've got lots of headlines for you. So I'm going to go through them kind of quick just to give you an overview. I'll leave all of the links down below so you can get them. They'll be in the description. All you have to do is click the little triangle if you're on like a mobile device or, you know, the show more or whatever the case is. You got to click on something and it'll pop open that description. Then you can see all of them down there. Let's get going. I'm sure you've already heard this one, but I just want to make sure that you do. That bar was on the news. Uh, I believe it was ABC News. And his interview, he talked about not being too happy with Trump's tweets about the Justice Department. Now, the rest of them, he, if you listen carefully, he didn't so much mind the rest of them. But the ones about the Justice Department, he said, make it impossible for me to do my job. Well, you know, sometimes I just wonder if Trump is not baiting these people so that they'll try it again, because the more they talk about impeaching him yet again, the better it's going to be for Trump. And it's going to make him have more votes in the fall. So I don't know. Uh, you can read the article here and there's actually the clip. You can uh, hear that. Now, Trump's response to that uh, through the press secretary was, eh, Okay, that's fine. I don't care if the guy doesn't like my tweets. I'm going to keep tweeting because I got a right to speak. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. But, you know, the interviewer said, aren't you afraid, uh, you know, uh, kind of implying that don't you think that you're going to get fired for doing this? And Barr's like, no, oh, I'm going to do what's right. Okay, well, again, doesn't bother Trump because Trump's not going to fire him. He's not at all because he does what's right and he's going to do what's right even if Donald Trump doesn't like it. That doesn't matter. What Barr is doing is focusing on restoring the rule of law in our country and that's what we need to have done. But you know what? That's not at odds with what Trump's doing. Trump wants to see the same thing. So I don't think that this is a big thing. I think that, you know, the press is making it more than what it was. Anyway, um, just wanted to point this out to you. Yes, the Space Force names first senior enlisted advisor. And there he is. His name is Chief Master Sergeant Roger A. Toberman. So there he is. That's him. And uh, kind of exciting in a lot of ways to see this Space Force, you know, starting to flesh out and that it's becoming just like any of the other branches having all these different people. So I thought I'd let you know about that. And then this one is kind of a blast from the past. So um, hang with me on this because I think you'll find it interesting. This is actually from July of 2015. And uh, look what it says. You know, This is about Eric Holder and returns as hero to law firm that lobbies for big banks. So this is after Holder had left as attorney general and he returned to look Covington and Burling where have we heard Covington and Burling before those were the people that were the lawyers for General Flynn that screwed him over yeah this was the law firm ha uh ha -huh. and if they hired Eric Holder you gotta know what kind of firm that is so is it any wonder what happened to Flynn was Flynn set up you know, by the very lawyers that were supposed to be protecting him? I think kind of so. But then again, we know how it's all going to play out because he's innocent and it's eventually, you know, people are saying they want him pardoned. No, folks, we don't want pardons because these people didn't do anything wrong. They don't need pardons. They need to be exonerated completely. So, you know, I'm not for, I'm not one of those that says pardon Flynn or pardon Stone. No, let's just exonerate them because the whole thing was a pack of lies. The cases against them, crazy. Anyway, uh, this Breitbart article was one I thought you might want to see because guess what? Virginia passes bill to give electoral votes to popular vote winner. And that came out on the 12th of February. I got to tell you, folks, what's going on in Virginia? Really? Hmm. Very disturbing because this is this national popular vote interstate compact. And they're trying to get this set up so that all of these states will pretty much ignore whoever their people voted for and their electors will go to whoever has the popular vote over all the United States. 
So essentially, it does away with the Electoral College. And so all of us little states, yeah, guess what, folks? Majority rules, we're going to be out of luck. So, you know, that's scary to me. And I'm not sure how it's constitutionally, um, you know, possible for them to do this. So I just think that this is something that we need to keep tabs on because if that happens, then essentially it is a popular vote. And the popular vote is not always going to be fair to all of the different states. So anyway, um, then I wanted to show you this because I'm sure you probably already heard this, but I want to make sure that everybody has the lead juror in the Roger Stone case ran for Congress as a Democrat in 2012. And she had like had all of these tweets and things that she's posted that were anti-Trump, anti-Stone uh, even. She mentioned him and, you know, this lady was so biased and she was a lawyer as I understand it she's a lawyer so she should have known that she was too biased to be ruling on that case to be a juror there but oh no that's not how Democrats seem to work and so yeah there's the article from the Daily Caller I thought you'd like to read that this is really again Another time that they're just showing the public who they really are, that they don't care what kind of rules and laws they just kind of run roughshod over. They just want to accomplish their goals. The end justifies the means. And that is a scary thing for anyone to go by. Because when our government is run like that, where the end justifies the means, we're in trouble. We really are. Okay, and then this was pointed out, and you may not quite get this, but if you are somebody who follows the 17th letter of the alphabet, you understand that the name Evergreen was the Secret Service code name that was given to Hillary Clinton. And so this kind of makes you wonder if there isn't some kind of reason they named her that. This is something that I've known about for a while, but it has to do with drug patents. I didn't know it was called evergreening, but I understand why they might call it that. Because when you have a drug and you've put a lot of work into it and a lot of you know research and everything, they get a seven-year patent on that drug. And then no, during that time, nobody else can make a generic of it. So they have kind of like a, a corner on the market for those seven years to recoup their expenses on the R&D. Well, after those seven years are up or as they're coming to an end, if they can come up with another um, unique use of it, like if it's an antidepressant, like Prozac, I believe they did this with it. Okay, so they had Prozac and it was an antidepressant for seven years. Then after seven years, they found out, oh, you know what? It kind of works for anxiety too. So then they put it out as an anxiety drug. <laughs> and they got seven more years on that as a patent. That's what they call evergreening the drugs because it is coming up with new uses for it. Even though it's the same drug, they just kind of tweak something on it. And all of a sudden, they get seven more years. And when you extend that patent for seven more years, you know, it's really financially lucrative. And that's how they make a lot of their money. And so that's what they say here. In the pharmaceutical trade, when brand name companies patent new inventions that are really just slight modifications of old drugs, it's called evergreening. And it's a practice that, according to some people who have looked into it, isn't doing a whole lot to improve people's health. And it's really not. If you... You know, whenever you hear drug commercials, please listen very carefully to them because they tend to like to use the word may. And may is a weasel word because it allows for a lot of things. Well, you know what? Tomorrow the sun may be blue, but it probably isn't going to be. <laughs> and a lot of times when they say about a condition that it may be caused by, that means they don't know. And so they're throwing that out because it's a possibility that they're not sure of. So I just wanted to let you know that I don't know if this has to do with the type of evergreen that they named Hillary after, 
but I just wanted to point those out and kind of a connection. And that is something that I know for sure. It's been going on for years. I mean, ever since they've had patents. So yeah, they get seven years and then if they can find some other use for it or they can tweak it a little bit, then they end up getting seven more years. And every time they do that, they get seven more years. And that's very lucrative for them because you see, after the first seven years, you've already recouped all your R&D expenses. So after that, you know, everything else is like icing on the cake. So uh, just something to consider. Anyway, um, then this one. Yeah, this teacher resigns after getting arrested for some traffic problems. Yeah, that's how I'm going to say it. Some traffic problems. And there was an investigation. And yeah, uh, so he was one of 12 men charged. And this investigation began in late 2019. Now, I know a lot of you think nothing's happening. And none of the big names have had you know any indictments filed on them yet i understand that at least not that we know of but there have been tons 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 of people who have had traffic problems yeah they've been arrested and uh, you know all kinds of things going on like that so yes that has been a huge thing and if you keep track on the Department of Justice, you see a lot of people that are in trouble for this. This one I thought the men might like to hear. Yeah, this is a new Alabama bill, and it forced you to get a vasectomy at age 50 or after a third child. Hmm. And that was, of course, a woman, Rolanda Hollis, a Democrat, who introduced the bill. And why? Well, she says it would require them to do this, and it says the man would also have to pay for it on his own. So not only would the government say you have to do it, but they would also say you have to pay for it. And so this is to neutralize the A-ban bill because they think that that's the same thing. Yeah, okay. Preventing someone from being able to father a child is the same as not allowing a woman to get an A. Uh, you know, that's just, it's crazy. But anyway, I'll leave the link down below and you can read it for yourself. Ah, insanity. Hey, Hope Hicks returns to the White House and uh, she's going to be reporting to Jared Kushner. You know, it was kind of weird when she left. I just think she was really getting ripped on and she was you know, having some real trouble because she was trying to do her job and she was getting hit on all sides. And you know what? For Trump, he's just got kind of that personality that can take on people like that. He's got like a thick skin, a very thick skin. But it's hard. It is hard to have people say nasty stuff about you all the time. And that's really what all of his administration has had to put up with. It's difficult. It's emotionally draining. And if you've ever been in a situation where people told lies about you and you knew they were lies, but, you know, you feel like you can't do anything about it, it's very frustrating and it is very emotionally draining. So I don't know why she's coming back, but I'm kind of glad she is. She was nice and I think she's kind of part of things. And so we'll see. She's going to come back as counselor to the president. So I thought that was really interesting there. And this is another one I thought you might want to see, that Judicial Watch is now suing the FBI for some documents related to this guy because they were caught lying to the courts. Hmm, is that the first time? No, it seems like they know how to lie. Lie, lie, lie. And so, yeah, they're trying to find out some emails that have to do with this guy. Now, if you recall, he was a DNC staffer who was murdered in the early morning hours of July 10th, 2016. And to this day has not been solved because they're lying about him. So anyway, I just thought this would be something you'd like to know more about because I'm telling you folks, when this is uncovered, it's going to lead to some big things because, you know, he, he 
played a significant role. And the idea that they have not found anybody who was responsible for that yet is highly suspicious to me. Well, I know why, but anyway. Uh, this one. Joe Biden's son, Hunter, is invested in China's mass surveillance program used to monitor Uyghur Muslims. Yep. And so he's making money off of this. If you go through this, this is from May of 2019. It came out. I got to tell you that the site is Democracy Now. It is a very left-wing site. And the idea that even they are putting out stuff like this is really important. And you can watch that clip, but they have a transcript down here, too, if you'd rather just do the transcript. And they're just very upset that Hunter Biden might be involved in this. And it's like, yeah, they've known about it. This is what is so crazy. Again, this was from May of 2019. When was the Ukraine phone call? That was in July. Oh, gosh, this was before that. So this is what they knew. They already knew this was going on and that there were connections not only with Ukraine, but connections with China. And this is, I mean, this is huge because you've got this face plus plus that they've got is biometric data collection and facial recognition software because what they do, the Chinese, they have these everywhere and they scan people's faces they keep track if you do something bad you know they've got it like on your permanent record if you do something the communist government considers good you get brownie points and you know it's uh really serious this social monitoring that they're doing but anyway yeah one of the people in there is hunter biden and it says that this was interesting because they were trying to say, well, this is just what the right wing are saying. And this guy is like, no. Well, over the last 10 years, Hunter Biden has been involved in a number of investment opportunities and business deals. In 2008, oh, gee, 2008, wasn't that when his dad was elected vice president? Hmm, November 2008. He deregistered as a lobbyist and transitioned into this investment career. Gosh, it was almost like he was getting things around so he could make money off of his dad's new position. Uh, in 2014, he traveled to China and formed this very exclusive investor partnership with the Chinese government, partnering with the Bank of China. That's one of the largest state-owned banks. Oh, goodness, 2014. Hey, who was president then? Barack Obama. Who was vice president? Oh, yeah, Joe Biden. Uh-huh. And it goes through, I mean, really seriously, this right here is very uh, well put out for a Democrat. I can't believe that this is actually from a Democrat source, but it is. And it goes through, and of course, they try to uh, blame the same thing. They try to say it's the same thing as the Trump sons and Ivanka, because Ivanka has received special licenses to sell her products in China. Of course, she applied for them in 2016 before her dad was elected and she ended up getting them. But what was she getting? She had actual products that she was selling. Now, remind me again, what products was Hunter Biden selling? None. None. He sold nothing. There's a huge difference when somebody is in an investment thing and you got a job where you're getting paid big time bucks for doing nothing and someone who is actually producing products that they're selling. Yeah. And it, patents. Oh, because they got patents on things. Yeah. And so I will leave the link to this below because, you know, that talks about it too. So if you want to read that side of it, but remember, this is from CNBC. So uh, definitely they're trying to target her. And that was November of 2018. So yeah, they were trying to the, smear her name. And how awful that she got approval from China for 16 new trademarks um, that she applied for in 2016. So she had to wait for a couple years to get them. Yeah, that's how it works. Uh-huh. And so here's another one. Hunter Biden tied to China firm with questionable dealings. So, yeah, this is 
really connecting in because this Patrick Ho, the lieutenant to the founder of the multi-billion dollar Chinese conglomerate CEFC China Energy, was indicted under the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act in the Southern District of New York for his role in a global money laundering and bribery scheme aimed at government officials in Africa. So, yes, folks, uh, this is it right here. Here's the press release on that if you want to see it money laundering and so again i know that we want to see our people arrested but there are so many people that it all ties into around the world and they're all connected so information that they got when they uh tried this guy which i think he was just sentenced i'm not sure but um when they're trying him the information could also be used because he was connected in with Hunter Biden. Look at this. It says a high ranking Chinese businessman was charged with the Justice Department with global cor corruption and bribery in 2017. And the first call he made after his arrest was to Vice President Joe Biden's brother, James Biden, who thinks the call was meant for Joe's son, Hunter. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's a Biden. This is who the guy's first phone call was to. You gotta wonder. They were trying to reach out to the younger Biden for help. Yeah, because Hunter agreed to represent Ho as part of Hunter's efforts to work out a liquefied natural gas deal worth tens of millions of dollars with CEFC China Energy's leader, Yi Jingming. So, yeah, tell me about it. There's more connections, more connections all the time. And speaking of connections, guess what? Mitt Romney is a top 20 recipient of funding by George Soros' lobbyist group. I'm sure that surprises you, right? Uh, were you surprised? I'd like to see the look on your face. This comes from OpenSecrets.org, and he's received $17,500 from Soros Fund Management. Here are the others on the list. Uh, you have... Uh, Obama got $120,000, um, and then you have Chuck Schumer, you got Hillary Clinton, I mean, big nut, big money here, Nita Lowey, uh, Salazar, uh, William Weld, he didn't go very far, but he got $24,000, yeah, so, uh, anyway, those are some of them that are on the list, I thought I would let you know. Here's the tweet. If you just click right here, you can actually go to the tweet. And so you can see it. I'm sure it says top 20 here. So I'm sure it has the rest of them too. But yeah. So news that Romney has accepted big money from Soros won't surprise many, given his own allies have been calling him out lately for being petty. <laughs> and motivated by bitterness and jealousy. No, I think he's motivated because he's incriminated in all this and he's trying to save his butt. So that's what I think on that one. All right, let's go to the next. Uh, almost getting to the end here. We'll see. Trump floats halt to officials listening in on calls with foreign leaders. Well, you know, Trump's like, so uh, not happy that Vindman, who was one of them listening in, became a turncoat and, uh, you know, lied about what he heard on the phone call so trump started thinking hey why are all these people listening in on my phone calls anyway i don't want so many people and he hasn't said it for sure if you read this article he hasn't actually said it. he just said maybe you know he might but um you know he may end the practice of having national security see i told you watch for that word may because the word may will give it away all the time it doesn't mean yes it doesn't mean no it just is a possibility so anyway i thought i'd leave you this article so you can read that from the hill and then this one this was an article from um actually september 28th and I just posted this because I thought it was kind of funny. There were 24 names in the Ukraine whistleblower complaint that should doom Trump. Did Trump get doomed? No, no, he didn't. <laughs> so this came back to bite him in the butt. But, you know, one of the major things that they have always pointed out is this crowd strike. And they've tried to connect crowd strike to the conspiracy theory. But there's much more. And it's not a conspiracy theory. They're, they're saying that... 
Um, the conspiracy theory part of it is that Ukraine hacked the DNC server. Well, no, we're saying that neither Ukraine nor Russia hacked the DNC server. We know what happened. It was an inside job. Yeah. So that's always funny that they, they mention that and they get really hyper. But yeah, CrowdStrike, it's going to come out that CrowdStrike has a much, much bigger role in what was going on in Ukraine, folks. So I'll leave this article down below. It just kind of is funny to look back at it now because, again, this was from September when they were trying so hard to build their case against Trump. And uh, yeah, <laughs> now this is another one for those who follow the 17th letter of the alphabet. This is just a possibility. Somebody in the research community suggested when it says one to 99, maybe this is what it's talking about. These are, this is the criminal resource manual. CRM is what it's called. And there's evidently 500 parts to it. Well, there's all these parts to it. So you can click on those and go to those different parts. But uh, this is just the first 99 of them. Some of them are kind of interesting. When you look at them, I thought it was interesting. Crimes against immediate family of all federal officials. Uh, crimes against internationally protected persons. Crimes against select Uni United States officials. Murder for hire. Hmm. Crimes committed within the special maritime jurisdiction of the United States, sea piracy, <laughs> hostage taking, terrorist stuff. I just thought the first 99 were kind of interesting. You know, use of biological, nuclear, chemical, or other weapons of, you know, destruction. Uh, international traffic and arms regulation, genocide, torture. Oh, and a big bunch on electronic surveillance and video surveillance. And yeah, so I'll leave this if you want to go through and read some of them. I thought they were kind of interesting. Um, I don't know that there is a connection. I just thought that this was kind of an interesting document. Oh, look, and there's steps here. Step two, step three, step four. There is no step five. but <laughs> I don't know that that necessarily is the step five it's talking about. So... Um, ooh, lots of fun stuff in this, the first 99. So anyway, I'll leave it down below. You can check through it at your leisure and see if there's something that interests you more. I don't know. And then the last thing is that, yes, they have taken down Rand Paul's Senate floor speech. Now, I am going to post tomorrow a version of it. I am going to uh, beep out his name he who shall not be mentioned and see if I can get the speech up there because the speech was fantastic. If you've not seen it, you really need to see it. So I'll probably put it up, um, on Friday evening. So I hope that's when it'll come out, but in order to do it and not have any copyright violations, I need to make sure that I make sufficient commentary on it so that it is um, fair use and fair use can only be if I have sufficient commentary on it. So I will try to do what I can with that so that it falls under fair use because I want to do things honestly here. So anyway, there you go. It has been taken down. I'm really surprised, but I'm not surprised because I had one and they took it down because his name shall not be spoken. Of course, nobody knows who he is, but everybody knows the name that you're not supposed to say that is because you can't say the name of a whistleblower. So it's like, um, we're not stupid. We can put those together. <laughs> but anyway, so that's it. That's what I've got for you. And we'll see what happens when that goes up. I don't know if they're going to decide that the whole speech really needs to come down or not. But the whole speech was excellent. And he made several very good points. So I'll post that tomorrow sometime and you'll be able to see it. So that's what I've got for you on this one. Yes, the sciatica is a little bit better today. And I'm hoping tomorrow, um, Friday, when you're going to see this, I hope I get to the chiropractor. It's just there was snow and uh, just issues. So it's like you don't really want to be shoveling snow when you got um, <laughs> your back hurts and your leg hurts. So um, I'm going to accomplish that. It wasn't a lot of snow, fortunately. So I think I can probably get it cleared off tomorrow if, if I feel better. 
and I've been trying to stay down and not make it, you know, not irritate it. So yeah, the sciatica is really sucks. Yeah. So yeah, folks, sciatica really sucks. I understand it. And I know I, my chiropractor helped me last week. It's just, I couldn't get up to see him this week. It, it you know, when you live by yourself, there are some limitations and he's like a half an hour away. So it was one of those things like, I just can't get there. I know he could help, but I can't get there. So anyway, um, such is life. That's the way it works. And, you know, you just have to be ready for anything, I guess. So we've got lots going on in the world, and I'm anxious to see what happens tomorrow. Every day is a new journey. So that's what I've got for you on this one. I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you all later.